Today, I want to show you a couple quick tips on how to color correct to get perfect skin tones. If your film project involves filming people, the most important thing to correct is going to be the skin tones. Uh, it's the easiest thing for people to look at and, and, and tell that something's wrong with the footage and it just doesn't look good. Uh, it's, it's even more important than the white balance. And I know you might say, well, if the white balance is correct, wouldn't the skin tones be correct as well? And usually I would say, yeah, that's, that's probably right. But, you know, sometimes the camera doesn't have a great internal, especially if you're on a budget, a great internal uh, skin tone. Like, for example, I'm filming, filming on a Sony and Sony is kind of notorious for pushing the skin tones a little to the green, um, kind of the greenish blue side. Even if I hold up a white card and I get the white balance exactly right, a lot of times, you know, when you pull it up on your uh, computer, everything's, everything's correct except the skin tones. The skin tones are going to be a little bit green. But if you don't have a color checker or you didn't white balance or your footage is already shot and now you're trying to figure out how can you get the skin tones looking the best that you can now that you have it already filmed. There are some things that we can do inside of DaVinci Resolve or any other uh, video editing software that you might use that can help you get really good skin tones. So I filmed a short sequence um, so that we could look at some skin tones and I intentionally let the white balance be incorrect um, because I wanted to show you how we can still get good skin tones in post if we didn't get good skin tones in camera. And if you're a more hands-on learner like I am, you can download these clips from a link in the description and you can upload to your video editing software and follow along as I correct the skin tones here. So in DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna go to the color editing tab. And if you don't already have one, you can create a node by hitting Alt S and that will give you your first color correction node. So what I typically like to do before I work with any kind of color, I want to get the lighting um, correct. So I'll, I'll pull up the waveform. Um, I like to bump the saturation down to zero. And then in my um, curves module, I will, you know, manipulate these to get the, um, the blacks where I want them, the, the whites where I want them. Now in this particular shot, I filmed it a little bit darker because that's the kind of mood I was going for. And so there's not really much for me to do um, in the curves, but I am going to bump the saturation down to about 45. Uh, it, I have it set on the Sony to be a little oversaturated so I can pull those down and edit them in post. So looking at this image, it is uh, a little cool and a little green. And so one easy thing to do, easy fix, is to, inside of our color wheels, take the temperature and just bump it up and take the tint and bump it up. And if your white balance was off, adjusting the temperature and the tint for the overall image is probably something that you're gonna have to do. But if you did happen to use a white balance card and your white balance is set and it's correct, but the skin tones are still a little bit off, um, I'm gonna show you how to adjust only the skin tones without affecting the rest of your image at the same time. So I'm gonna set all of these back to zero and I'm going to open up my qualifier tool, little eyedropper, and I'm going to select somewhere in the skin tones. And you can see that it's made a selection based on kind of the color and the lighting that I chose. So if you hit Shift H in DaVinci Resolve, uh, it, it will show you only what you have selected. And so far, so good. Um, we've got a lot of the skin tones selected, but we are missing a little bit of it, just depending on um, kind of how light and dark um, the area on my face was and so I'm just going to make a few tweaks here to try to get all of our skin tones selected at the same time. So in the luminance you can adjust these, you can pull the lows down, now you can see uh, some of the beard and some of the darker skin tones are now pulling in but we're also getting a little bit maybe of the back wall um, just because it was dark and kind of the same as the skin tone. I want to get as little of the background as I can while still getting, you know, a good amount of, of the actual skin. Okay, and when you're happy with what you have selected, 
I'm going to bring up the vector scope. So the vector scope is going to show you what colors are being represented in this image. Um, now, since I have just the skin tones highlighted, you're going to see most of the energy is right here in this section. This white line is what's called a skin tone indicator, and you can turn that on and off inside this settings window. And that's just going to kind of show you where proper skin tones should be lying. So what I've typically found is to get a good skin tone, it needs to be kind of resting on just the right side of this line. So you can either use your offset wheel, drag it around and try to find the skin tone, um, or you can use your temperature and tint. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost the temperature a little bit and boost the tint a little bit. And I'm just gonna kind of mess with these, use my vector scope as a guide, you know, keep looking at the skin tones and find what looks correct and so you can obviously you can push this too far you can get your skin tones uh, way too pink you can get them too orange too blue so there's a lot of adjustments we can do here but what I want to do is tweak this a little bit and try to find just that sweet spot of the skin tones look correct um, all the energy is just resting on the right side of the skin tone indicator and everything just looks the way that it should and if you need to reference this with the overall footage you can hit shift h again and now you can see the and now you can see the background with it and if i turn this note on and off you can see kind of what we've done so far um, a little blue a little too blue a little too green and now the skin tones are looking a lot more correct and so just take some time when you're when you're working on this um, really dial in the skin tones because like i said that's the most important part so you want to spend a lot of time, make sure your skin tones are correct before you ever move on to the color grading section. When you've gotten to the point that you're happy with the skin tones, um, if your other clips happen to have the same lighting and the same camera and all the settings were the same, you should be able to just copy the node where you did the, the skin tone corrections and just paste that into your other clips and it should give you, you might have to do a little bit of tweaking because um, the lighting could have changed a little bit, but it should give you a pretty good representation of, um, you know, keeping good skin tones throughout all of your clips. So this is how I color correct to get really nice, natural looking skin tones. And I do this before I do any kind of color grading. Now in my next video, I'm gonna show you how I color grade and how I can push a pretty hard color grade onto the footage without sacrificing the natural skin tones that we worked hard to get in this video.